السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Most gracious, most merciful or All praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Lord of the worlds, owner of cure, owner of health The one who's blessed us with the health we have The one whom we have hope in whenever we are ill The one whom we call out to for our own health As well as the health of those who have taken ill May Allah grant them all cure and may he protect us from all, form of, all forms of sickness and disease. Complete blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the previous messengers who came to us to take us out of the darkness into the light. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and their companions and may he bless every single one of us. Ameen. My beloved mothers and sisters gathered here this afternoon, I am only here because I feel it is extremely important for us to take a very, very great interest in the health of our mothers and sisters, as well as our own health. And as you know, we as Muslims believe that the body is entrusted to us by the Maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. None of us chose the body that we ultimately got. And none of us chose the parents we have or the race we were born into. None of us chose the genes that we actually have. This is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe that all that makes up the test. The test that lasts approximately 70 years, according to the narrations of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in which we are to fulfill the commands and obligations of the Almighty upon us. One of them being to take good care of your health. And for this reason, I encourage every one of you to ensure that every time you feel that you are not as healthy as you should be, you need to take it seriously because it's not your own body that you're playing with, but it's, an, it's a trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He holds you responsible for what you've done in that regard. So this is why I happen to be here this afternoon to tell you whether it is the early screening or any other checkups that we should be doing, please don't take it lightly. Because lives can be saved and at the same time people can or people who are diagnosed early have a greater chance of uh, cure sooner than it would have been had they discovered it later. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. I'd like to make mention of a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he says and I spoke about it on Friday after having been invited to this particular function. The Prophet ﷺ says, نِعْمَتَانِ مَغْبُونٌ فِيهِمَا كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ الصِّحَّةُ وَالْفَرَاغِ There are two gifts that Allah has blessed us with that many people take for granted. The first is the health. And the second is the free time that we have. I want to concentrate for a few moments on the aspect of health, seeing that it is definitely a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you know that when a person is taken ill, it's actually from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to write a reward next to your name depending on how you dealt with that sickness or illness. And this is why every one of us, or should I say almost every one of us, at least once a year, we have a common cold or a cough or something that goes wrong and sometimes it becomes a little bit more serious. But at the same time, how we deal with it, do we continue to uh, carry our day-to-day -day lives or carry on with our day-to-day -day lives without giving our bodies the rest that the bodies deserve. If that's the case, we're engaging in sinful behavior from an Islamic perspective. The hadith says, وَلِبَدَنِكَ عَلَيْكَ حَقَّ Your body has a right over you. You owe it rest. This is why those who are deprived of sleep or who deprive themselves of sleep or of food, that which is nutritious and so on, uh, with any excuse whatsoever, they are accountable, they are responsible in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did you not sleep correctly on time? Why did you not eat correctly on time? A few moments ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, and here as I landed, and we were speaking about how important it is to eat healthy, sometimes because of our weight, for example, we tend to think, maybe if I stay away from food, I might do myself a favor. Not realizing that the correct way is to eat healthy, but to burn it. And perhaps to be a little bit more active than you are. 
So to, to stay away from food in its entirety, just because you're worried about what you, you know, what you weigh, for example, a few kilos this way and that way, that is the wrong way of solving the problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Just a quick note, don't become too conscious of your weight. People don't really notice. We notice much more than everyone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our sisters and our mothers. Really, I am here this afternoon in order to stand up and declare the status of a woman in Islam and the status of women in general, in humanity. We are brothers and sisters, not only in faith, but even in humanity. And we need to know that to encourage one another to do the right thing when it comes to our health is part of our duty to our maker. So for me to get up and tell you to fulfill your salah is one thing. Tell me to, uh, if I were to tell you, for example, to fulfill your zakah, perhaps to dress appropriately, so many other things. All these are correct, but I need to stand up as well when it comes to telling you to look after your health. That's also part and parcel of Islam. It's part and parcel of my duty towards humanity at large. And this is why it is wrong for the scholars of our age or the scholars of any time to shun matters that affect the ummah or humanity at large that are also duties that we have unto our maker. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all and may he make us be ambassadors of goodness and peace who can go or who can travel the globe or reach the globe. Nowadays, you don't actually need to travel to reach the globe. You know, press or press a few buttons on your phone or should I say touch the screen on your phone and perhaps you reach the globe. But alhamdulillah, it's up to us to ensure that we encourage one another. I find that a lot of sisters uh, tend to think and to feel and I'm speaking from experience, having addressed certain issues and health matters with sisters via email and various other forms. They tend to feel that, oh, you know, I'm not feeling well, it's okay, perhaps I'll feel better tomorrow. And that carries on for a while until whatever they've had becomes such that is much more serious than it would have been had they the first day thought to themselves, I'm not feeling well, let me get this checked out. Allahu Akbar. Something serious. And the sisters tend to continue. You know, a lot of our sisters happen to be housewives or they go to work. And I feel that perhaps they work a little bit harder than men. I'm, I'm just being honest. And sometimes a little bit more particular, especially nowadays. And what happens is, uh, as they continue in their lives, they tend to give more importance to others than themselves. Whether it's your children, your spouse, or whoever else at work, the boss or the CEO or whoever else it is, Remember one thing, you come first. That's something. You can, you can actually, uh, you know, sign off sick because you're not feeling well. There's nothing wrong. You come first because you cannot carry on like a motor. We're not motors. We're not machines. We are human beings. We need rest. Sometimes we need pampering. We need a little bit of a relaxation, a holiday, a break. It's important. It's very good because for our health, it's, it rejuvenates. And really it does help in so many ways. My mothers and sisters, it's an honor to be here this afternoon. And I know I've said a very few words uh, of encouragement. But I feel that I like to take care of my own health. Mainly because, well there are two reasons. Two reasons. And there might be more, but the main reasons. One is because it's a duty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But two is for myself. That's what it is. I can be a better Muslim. I can think better. I can reach out to humanity in a better way when I know that I'm feeling better. Obviously, it's in the hands of Allah. You pray to Allah, but you try your best. You try to eat healthy. You try to deal with whatever health matters you have as soon as you can. Don't wait and delay. And this is because you as a better person, you're a healthier person, you will be able to be much more effective in whatever roles you are playing in your life. And I feel this for myself and I'd like to think that the sisters generally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the female in a way that the concern they have and the mercy they have in their hearts towards others and towards the other creatures of the Almighty perhaps is of a higher level. So in the interim they tend to forget about themselves. And this is something it's the third time I'm saying it in this talk and it's not for no reason it's because it definitely does happen. Think about it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease and goodness. So the body being a gift, Allah is going to take it away. Health is definitely a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's how we look at it as believers. Because when you have it, what did you do with it? A day will come when 
perhaps you are affected in that regard, what did you do in order to look after yourself? And then how did you deal with the crisis when you tried your best and still you were failing in that battle? May Allah protect us. Did you still have hope? Did you still give others hope? I've come across stories on the uh, news feeds where they've been, you know, should I say, is it heroines or perhaps actresses and so on who've been through, subhanallah, health matters, thinking and pondering over the future or thinking about the future. And they thought to themselves, or a few of them thought to themselves, you know what, we'd rather go through this now instead of going through it later on. And obviously it, it's, it might not be the right thing to do for everyone, but that was something we learned from it that subhanallah, people are concerned about the future. If it's genetically proven that it's coming down, perhaps you need to be much more, uh, should I say, bothered about it than the others. Because it would affect you perhaps greater possibility probability than others but it may not affect you may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the point that i'm raising right now is if a person is affected we need to have hope in the mercy of allah we will seek medication and we need to know that as believers we should have the conviction within us that the curer is the almighty but he has given us the capacity to do X amount to do a certain amount we we can go to the doctors we can seek medication we will perhaps you know do whatever we can the rest is in the hands of the Almighty nobody can ever claim to be a true believer when they have left everything in the hands of the Almighty and they say oh maker you are the cure you cure and the Almighty says but the doctor was right next door and I placed him there why didn't you go to him I placed him there so this is what we say let's not have false hope in the Almighty it should be the correct hope and the correct hope is made up of utilizing the capacity you have to do whatever you can and then leave the rest in the hands of the Almighty and when we start whatever we are doing is in the name of the Almighty anyway so to encourage the others uh, or those who are affected is also part and parcel of our duty that's what I'm doing this this afternoon subhanallah and uh, what it does is it conscientizes us, it makes us feel as well how blessed we are because a person does not value health until and unless they are affected themselves or someone close to them or whom they know is affected. And from this, we then become closer to the Almighty. We appreciate the health we have. Whilst we're healthy, we can then do as much as we can in order to ensure that we uh, don't waste that particular health. The same applies to our age, our life. Uh, we're all alive. A day will come when we won't be alive. That's a fact. I mean, nobody can say you're dooming us because we're not dooming you. We're just mentioning reality. But a winner is he or she who's used that life in a way that they've touched as many people as possible such that when they return to their maker, they've served their maker and served the maker through reaching out to the rest of the creatures of the same maker. And this is a winner. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst those who win. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. It's important for us to pray, not just for ourselves. This is what a believer should be doing. You pray for everyone. You pray for humanity at large. And then you pray for your brothers and sisters in faith. And then your brothers and sisters and relatives who are related to you blood-wise. So there are different circles. But it doesn't mean that you just sit and you pray for yourself. Or just for your own closed circle. Reach out to others. We are taught as believers that every time you pray for someone else, the angels pray for you or ask for the same thing for you. So if you're saying, oh Allah, cure that person. And the angels are saying, oh Allah, cure the same person. Or, oh Allah, cure this person who's calling out for other people whose prayer, whose prayer is more valuable. I'd like to think the prayer of the angels. And this is why I always say, call out for others in order to earn a prayer from the angel. The angels, if that is the lowest point you've got to. I hope you understand what I've just said. Some or we are taught to call out for them whether the angels are praying for you or not. It's the feeling you have. But if, if, if it really gets to rock bottom where that is what has driven you to do it, so be it. At least you've got there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. As you know, I can keep on talking, but I hope these few words have motivated you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant cure to all those who are struggling and suffering with breast cancer. 
And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us uh, to detect this very early so that we can deal with it. If he has written for it to happen to us, may he help us go through it in a way that when we meet him ultimately, we will be in paradise. And I want to end with one more thing. And that is every moment you endure whilst you are ill or going through a sickness, remember that that is expiation of bad deeds and at the same time elevation elevation sometimes people might say well i didn't do anything bad so what is this all about it's not a punishment that's wrong for people to say oh this woman was punished because she's been so evil that is actually the worst statement that could be uttered in fact when allah loves you he tests you muhammad sallallahu says inna allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala when Allah loves you, He tests you. So your heart is softened and you get so close to Him. So if you are to return to Him, you will have returned with a softened heart. And this is what will drive you to paradise. When we've been through an illness, we will definitely reach out to others who are struggling with the same illness later on. If you're a survivor, perhaps a lot of you are here this afternoon because you're survivors or you know people close to you who've been through it, who've either survived or perhaps lost their lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them all paradise. But the truth is, the truth is, every time we go through some form of difficulty, it is elevation of our status. We should be coming closer to Allah. Don't become angry with the Almighty, never. He chooses for you your tests. Ask him to make it easy for you to pass. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all cure. May he bless you all and may he bless humanity. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.